The Goat House is back with score predictions and picks against the spread for every single NFL game in week five here every Wednesday with this video. I'm also going to point out some games that I think are worth putting money on, see which ones stand out above the rest, but we will talk about every game in this video. Let's take a look at what I got. Thursday night football, Buccaneers and the Falcons both look like legit teams. The Buccaneers look a little better right now. A lot of people picking the Bucs in this game, a lot of people saying under. I got the opposite, but since there's a mixed opinions and it could go either way, it's one I would pass on in terms of uh, you know, betting, but I do like the Falcons. I think the Falcons are a little better than what people think. They're going to continue to get better as the year goes on. Everything's new. A lot of new faces on defense, ton of new faces on offense, especially at the quarterback position, a guy coming off an Achilles injury is only going to get more comfortable. New coaching staff completely. So this is kind of where they can get going. I thought they got going even in the Eagles game where they got kind of got lucky, but the Chiefs game and they fell just short in that one. The Buccaneers are good. Baker's balling. He has receivers. He has running backs. They are very beat up. The Falcons are a little beat up too, but the Fal uh, the Buccaneers are, are already ruling out some key guys. They're a little beat up on defense, very beat up on defense, and it didn't really show last week because the Eagles were very beat up in one-dimensional because of those injuries on offense. The Buccaneers' injuries kind of showed against the Broncos, which I still don't know how good the Broncos are, but that was a little underwhelming in that game. Falcons defense could be a little better getting after the quarterback. The Buccaneers will have offense in this game. Not worried about the offense at all. I like the Falcons offense to get going. People not really sure how to feel about them. I'm telling you, they're going to continue to get better. They've been a little better than what people think. I know they didn't do a ton against the Saints. They did enough, and that was a really good defense. I think the Falcons find ways to expose the Buccaneers injuries. I think they'll be able to run and throw the ball. They squeak by in this one and win 26 to 24, monitoring some injuries still, but Buccaneers already ruled out some key guys. Antoine Winfield Jr., kind of a standout guy there. Falcons uh, offensive line's been a little beat up. I think they'll be okay. Bijan's been beat up. Sounds like he, you know, he said he's he's looking forward to playing, so that's a good sign there. Nothing guaranteed, but uh, I'll take the Falcons. Wouldn't put money on it, but I, I'm somewhat confident in them on Thursday night in Atlanta. That's the key there. Jets versus Vikings in London should be a good one. Remember to check out our Week 5 Picks video. Other guys join me on that so you get different perspectives. It's on the channel. Make sure to turn notifications on while you're at it so you don't miss any of our content. But I have the Vikings winning 24-17 to in London. I am somewhat confident with the Vikings winning around seven, maybe six points, but it is a little tricky because it's in London. You know, sometimes there's more factors. Who I mean, who just shows up? The traveling aspect seems to be a factor. That's probably why I wouldn't put money on it, but I do like the Vikings here. They they do seem to play well in London in the past. Doesn't mean they'll always, you know, win their games, but they are undefeated there. They are the better team right now, which always isn't the deciding factor. But I like the way they match up, too. Offense is playing well. The Jets' defense is really good, so a little bit of a challenge for the Vikings. But they're, at the same time, the defense isn't as good as we thought, you know, maybe as we thought it would be. Uh, but the big part is the Vikings' defense. They are fast. They're fast. They're confusing in that Brian Flores scheme. Uh, Rodgers got beat up last week. He, he's on the injury report. He's going to play. He's on the injury report because he really was visible that he got banged up without Morgan Moses in there and that offensive line struggling. So the Vikings will make sure they get after him with the blitz. I know Rodgers is a smart guy. Maybe he'll be able to find holes in, in that defense. But the Jets' best bet to me typically is running the ball, which they probably didn't do enough of in the Broncos game. But the Vikings are typically good stopping the run as well. So there's some things that side with the Vikings this game, uh, being in London, being the better team, and kind of the matchup. But, yeah, why I would probably pass on it just because, again, the, the London aspect, it's just – Anything could happen, even though it does right now kind of sore, sore, uh, side Excuse me, with the Vikings. 24-17 Minnesota is what I have. Let's see if they could keep going. They're due to lose at some point. And they got a bye right after this, so it should be pretty interesting what happens with them. We'll see if the Jets can figure it out. Ravens and Bengals. A little bit of a tricky one because the Bengals at home, as long as they're healthy, typically beat the Ravens. In Cincinnati, the, the three out of the last four, they typically handle business. The Ravens' defense isn't as good as the past. They played very well last week. And the Bengals' offense, even though they only have one win, they're clicking. Three weeks straight. Uh, it could be a fourth week here. So that those are reasons. Everything I just said, the Bengals could win. And the trends kind of keep happening here with, you know, this team always wins against this team in this scenario. Though, so far this early season, it's just staying true. So that would, those would be reasons to pick the Bengals. Uh, but like I said, they typically win at home against the Ravens. But the Bengals' defense is typically a lot better than what it is right now. Night and day difference, and that's why I'm going with the Ravens. The Ravens were trying some things out the first couple weeks. They were trying to be more of a 
pass first versus run or about even. They're a running team. They are a running team. We saw that against the Cowboys. They handled business. They almost blew a comeback. They handled business against the Bills, a really good team. Run first team, surprised with the pass. I thought Lamar was great throwing the ball, better than the stats showed. So that's how you actually open They open up the pass. So they'll do that. They learn their lesson. They'll get after it. The Bengals are bad on defense in general, but especially stopping to run uh, because they do not, not do they do not have the interior they used to have, DJ Reader being a big one, and they're beat up on the interior. The Ravens will handle business and control the clock. If the Bengals get a big lead and take the run game away from the Ravens, the Bengals are going to win. The Ravens get a lead and continue controlling the clock with that run game, they're going to win. It's, it's kind of that simple, but it's not that simple because it's tough to predict who's going to get the ball first, who's going to score first, but I'm going to trust the team that I know will be able to run the football, control the clock, and, and win the game here. But it should be a fun one. Yeah, because I'm, I'm the matchup in me and I'm, I'm leaning Ravens and because the trends say the Bengals, I wouldn't touch it. We're going to have some that I would touch, I promise. Uh, there's one team that I really like this week, but we have more than just that. So I do have the Ravens covering, but... I think that somebody's going to win by more than that spread. Somebody's going to win by a you know you know a decent at least a decent amount of points. You know if the Bengals whoever gets that first two two score lead there, um, so that it should be a fun one a battle for the AFC North. Can't wait. Bills at Texans right now. I have the upset. It's not too much of an upset, but key factor here. If Joe, I'm counting on Joe Mixon playing right now, and I really am not the injury guy. I really don't know for sure like what's in his head, what's in the Texans that if he's going to play or not. I'm kind of predicting he will. If Joe Mixon is out, I am leaning Bills. You can see me switch my pick to the Bills if Joe Mixon is out because these are two heavyweights in the AFC. They're two very very good teams. They both have one big weakness. It is the same weakness. They cannot stop the run both these teams are great but they cannot stop the run it's been exposed a little bit especially last week for both teams so Joe Mixon needs to play major major difference between Joe Mixon and Cam Akers major difference and the other running backs there uh, Joe Mixon's a stud when he was fully healthy in week one we saw him go off he can do that against the Bills but Josh Allen and James Cook they can go off against the Texans the Texans are wearing those those beautiful alternates and uh, Stephon Diggs revenge game at home. Key thing is at home here. If this was in Buffalo, I'd be picking the Bills if Mixon was playing or not. But the Texans are different at home. C.J. Stroud is different at home. He wins football games. He produces. And again, the Bills' pass defense has looked good so far, but they haven't they haven't been tested like this. With C.J. Stroud in Houston, with those receivers, Nico Collins looks like Justin Jefferson level right now, that good. Maybe the best receiver in football right now. And if you add Mixon into that mix, there's a lot of issues there. But Josh Allen could do it himself. I mean, Von Miller being suspended is a big thing here too as well because he's actually been playing much better this year. Uh, key factor, especially on like third downs. So I'm leaning Texans, but if Mixon's out, that is a brutal blow in this game, a major difference. So yeah, that's something to monitor for sure. But because they're two really good teams and it's about who's going to run, you, know, you got to predict who's going to run the ball better. The team that runs the ball better is probably going to win this game. They're both going to run well. But maybe it's going to come down to who makes those that extra throw. And you got two potential elite quarterbacks here. You got the 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 future in CJ Stroud. And you got the MVP, top MVP candidate, and Josh Allen. Cannot wait for that one right now. I'm going to go with the Texans 26-24. Let's monitor Joe Mixon. Panthers and Bears, and I promise we're going to get to ones that I would bet on, not just pass these early portion ones uh, I'm passing on. But yeah, this one's interesting. I think it's a good matchup for the Bears. I'm going to say I'm going to predict that this is Caleb Williams' best game. At least we hope it is. Uh, it should be his best game as a Chicago Bear, as an NFL quarterback. Uh, it's a little tricky to bet on because three and a half is that hook. You know, the Bears could win by three. The Panthers could win this game. They're a little sneaky, but teams, the, the way teams play anywhere else or at home versus at Soldier Field in Chicago, quite the difference. Saw the Rams last week, so tougher place to play for opponents. I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily think the Bears play a ton better at home, but it's more of the opponent plays worse in Soldier Field. So that's a big factor in this one. But the matchup I do like for the Bears because the Bears play great defense. Right now under Andy Dalton, the Panthers, what's their best thing? What do they got going for them? They're pretty explosive on offense. They can run the ball, and Dalton likes to throw the ball downfield, but they haven't played this Bears defense yet. It's very solid. They slipped up a little bit against the Colts. It's a little bit different of a matchup. So I think the Bears slow the Panthers' best thing they got going for them right now, and that's the only way the Panthers could win football games right now is the offense is, is explosive and the defense holds just enough. And their defense is bad because the pass rush is the worst in football, and that's good news for Caleb Williams, who that's kind of his one struggle. He's kind of taking his eyes off downfield and focusing on the pressure a little bit too much. 
much and you know just turning his head and his eyes too much and he really won't have to worry about that against the Panthers so that'll allow him to connect with his big time weapons the Panthers also can't stop the run the Bears haven't been able to run the ball until last week Swift broke a big run so it gives him some confidence so everything kind of points towards the Bears I could see it being like a field goal game but the Panthers in their last you know I don't know how you know their last from this year and last year against the spread as as road dogs they have not covered. They have not been covering. I mean, there's one cover in there. So uh, the trend says the Panthers do not cover in Chicago. So we'll take the Bears against the spread. But I wouldn't bet on it just because that hook. 23-17 Chicago. We could even see a little more offense than that. We will see. But this is all eyes on. The, it's, not, it's not a highlighted game. But it. I think it is because of Caleb Williams. All eyes on him. He must play. I think he must play his best game yet. I think he will. So one to watch there. Browns and Commanders. This, man, the Commanders are good. Command the Washington Commanders are good. Jane Daniels is good. He, he's elevating his play, so the whole offense are elevating their play. The defense has been the problem. They played very well last week, and that's still to be determined. Are we getting? They played against a, a high-powered offense in the Cardinals, but it's to be determined on if they'll continue that. With all that being said, this feels like a trap game. It kind of feels like a trap game here. I'm still gonna pick the Commanders. It's tough to. Pick this one against the spread as well. I, you know, I thought about 23 20. I mean, the commanders could score more than this because they, they, um, you know, been hitting overs in every single game so far. So it's a tricky one to pick. But why I think it's a trap game is Jaden Daniels, the commanders haven't seen Miles Garrett yet. They haven't seen the Browns defense, which hasn't been super great. Like it's supposed to be, it's been a little underwhelming. But it's still much better than what they played, and they'll figure it out at some point. They have a really good secondary. They have really good linebackers. They have Miles Garrett. They have Dalvin Tomlinson. Miles Garrett's going to be getting the Commanders' offense line's been playing better, but are we sold on that? You know, Garrett could be getting after Jaden Daniels. It could be just a different feeling for him, a different, a different game for him. But the, the positive for the Commanders' offense is they're rolling. They're clutching them on third downs. Jaden Daniels can escape. He could escape Miles Garrett. And the Browns under Jim Schwartz these last two years have run a lot of man coverage, and that's usually a no-no against the running quarterbacks. And you have maybe right now the best scrambling quarterback in football, Jane Daniels. So there's the matchup that sides with the Commanders. Uh, defensively, yeah, that's another reason it could be a trap game. Commanders defense looked great last week, but before that, it was awful. The Browns, you're still waiting for them to figure it out. The offense line is terrible. Commanders pass rushers looked good last week, but... You know, can they take advantage as the other teams did against the Browns offensive line? I actually thought Watson played better last week. It seems like teams can get separation on those commanders' corners. So is it and Stefanski's been a hot and cold coach waiting for him to get hot in terms of the play calling and scheming something up? It, it could be any time. It could be this week. So it just feels like this is a, is a trap game, even though the commanders are playing it simple better. They're at home. And I'm going to trust them to win. It just for all those reasons, I, I wouldn't touch it with the spread. I was thinking about the Browns with the spread as well. I, I didn't see a scenario where I picked the Browns, even though I can see them, yeah, again, being a trap game and winning. But I'll take the, the hot team here at home. Offense keeps rolling. Jaden Daniels makes that extra play. Gets a rushing touchdown in this game. Colts and Jags. I'm feeling the Jags in this one. Wearing those throwbacks. Love those uniforms at home. And a big reason is, well, first, Jonathan Taylor's a little banged up. High ankle sprain. Anthony Richardson banged up as well. It's the difference between Richardson, and I think Richardson will play, but what's the difference between him and Flacco? I think they have a, actually, this game, they might, I, you know, they might have a better bet with chance with Flacco. It probably depends on the matchup, but just because of his ability to, you know, throw the ball down uh, accurately, I suppose. But, Richardson's their guy. I think they actually would have beat the Steelers by more if he stayed in the game just because of the matchup, uh, just being he was looking good right away. And that great, we're getting off topic. But uh, the, the biggest reason I'm picking the Jags with this one and to score 27 points, they played well last week against the Texans. You, you could feel the difference, even though they lost. Like the offense really got going. Lawrence was playing better. Brian Thomas Jr. was awesome. Christian Kirk. Finally, that's the guy. Like he was their most important player in offense last year. And then he got hurt, and we didn't. And we saw, we learned that he was their most important player. And we haven't seen it so far early this year, except for that game. You could throw on the Colts. I mean, Justin Fields threw on the Colts, so the Jags continue to roll. They're due to get one here uh, before they go to London. So I will roll with. I think the defense will click at some point too, because I, I, they have good players. Ryan Nielsen's been a good defensive coach until this year. So I think they figure it out at some point. Colts dealing with some injuries, so some guys to monitor. The big one is Jonathan Taylor. I mean, he, that's that's their main guy, right? So Colts are playing better recently. 
the Jags typically, you know, following the trends, they typically do well uh, against the Colts. Um, so we'll, we'll go with Jacksonville, barely covering though. And I do promise we are going to get to some games that I will put money on. But um, another one that's a little tricky. I would say the over in this one, but uh, it's, it's a little scary uh, given the Colts injuries. The Dolphins and the Patriots, two of the worst teams in football right now. And I'm predicting a very low scoring game, 13 to 12. And that gets me to the under 36 points. It should stay under. Both these teams will be better on defense in this game. These offenses cannot do much. The Patriots' offensive line is brutal, so that plays a part there. Yeah, the Dolphins' offense really been struggling. I do think Huntley wasn't ready yet. You know, the chemistry wasn't there. We saw it right away with the backwards pass. Uh, just messy. I think they'll click a little bit more. I do think both teams' running games could get going a little bit. The Dolphins are awful stopping a run, so Stevenson, Gibson get going. But there's you know Stevenson struggling to hang on to the ball right now. I think Achan can get going. Uh, but the Patriots defense is still something, you know, but I think the Dolphins, because I think Huntley and crew kind of click a little bit more this week, clearly not ready last week on a primetime game, and the Dolphins do have the weapons. Like, the major difference between the Dolphins and the Patriots, the weapon difference is absurd. So, defensive game, I like the under in this game, uh, under 36, and I would use Miami as as plus 7 around that range in a, as a teaser leg. So, you had some points, and we'll talk about some other options, but... Even if they lose this game, it's got to stay close. It's got to be like a three-point game maximum, right? So, But I do like the, the, the difference in weapons here. The, the thing that scares me with the Dolphins, yes, Huntley's still not going to click in the run defense, but this, the Patriots' offense line's brutal. It's beat up. Andrews goes down. It's even more beat up. Brissett just cannot overcome. He's not good enough to overcome those things, but he's not getting any help as it is. So I'll take Miami in a tight a close squeaker here 13 to 12 and they are underdogs just by one point though Raiders and Broncos Broncos wearing those throwbacks clean but this should be a good one it's a little tricky of one because if we talk about trends trends this year are working out the Raiders continue to beat the Broncos it's been a long time since the Broncos and they play them twice a year have beaten the Raiders so that makes you want to go Raiders we'll see if Max Crosby plays I'm going to say I'm going to predict I'm not an injury expert, but I'm going to predict that he does. And I think Max Crosby has potential to win this game by himself because he is that good. And, you know, that that's something that type of pass rusher could really wreck Bo Nix's day. He really could uh, and just help create that extra turnover, whether he gets a turnover or creates it. So I can see them winning. We know Devontae Adams is going to play, and that's a little bit of a distraction. They still won last week without that. Um, you know, I... Raiders' run game's brutal. It got going a little bit more last week because of yardage, but they did fumble. Uh, the Broncos, their offense is pretty brutal. I think they'll be able to get a little bit going here at home, that altitude advantage. Um, it's been some time since they've been at home, but usually, typically it's a home field advantage. I'd watch for the Broncos offensively. Offense versus offense. Broncos' run game could be the difference in this one. Uh, but defensively, both I view as quality defenses. The Raiders, again, Max Crosby could could uh, you know create the difference there. A pass rusher that maybe the Broncos um, just haven't dealt with. I guess they dealt with T.J. Watt and that didn't go well. But uh, but the Broncos defense is on fire right now without Devonte Adams out there. They should be able to create some problems. But yeah, it's a tricky one. I definitely can see there. It's going to come down to. You know, could it come down to just a better kicker? Carlson's the better kicker. Could he hit a game-winning field goal? It's certainly possible. It seems like the Raiders are a reason for the Raiders. You know, they, they, they're they more struggling against the teams that actually can throw downfield. They even beat the Ravens, who really aren't a downfield team. So maybe in that regard, the matchup does favor the Raiders. It's not a team that's really going to be a threat downfield. But Broncos are balling right now. They're at home. I do think they get the run game going. The defense is playing very, very well. So it's kind of tough to pick against them. But plus three, you know, three points seems like a lot where the Raiders could could lose by less than that or win the game. So I, I felt much more comfortable going Raiders with the points. But because the game's so tricky, it come, could come down to a last-second field goal. I probably wouldn't bet on that one. I uh, thought about the under, but it's went down. When I first saw this matchup, it was around 37, 37.5. I probably would have put under on this, but it's went down. It's like 35 last I checked. So that's cutting it too close, but it still should stay under in this one. Um, so maybe maybe if you liked it out there, hey, if it's your gut, don't don't go against that there. Cardinals and 49ers. I go 49ers 24, Cardinals 20. It's a little tricky because the spread seems like a lot. I know the Cardinals got their ass kicked last week, and maybe that's the real Cardinals. And the 49ers are really good at home. They're better, much better at home than they, you know than away. Uh, they're at home. The Cardinals are struggling. They struggled last week. The offensive line was awful. Murray was off. Defense was bad. They can't stop the run, so Jordan Mason should run wild on them. So those are 
you know, signs point towards the Niners win big, and I could see it. It's that, and that's why I wouldn't bet on it. Wouldn't bet on this, even though the Cardinals getting seven and a half. I've seen it around seven, seven and a half. I, you know, it seems appealing, but you can see both scenarios. But uh, the Niners are still beat up. Special teams isn't great right now. Again, they're going to run the ball a lot in this game. I think they'll have success doing that, but it's going to drain the clock. The Cardinals, I think, will bounce back offensively. Murray's overall been playing really good. I thought he was off last week. I could see him bouncing back, just not enough. So I think the Niners, 24-20, a lot of running clock, and this one as both teams run the football. So 7.5 seems like too much based on how this season's gone. Looking at the Niners, they covered last week. The week before, they didn't, not only didn't cover a big spread, they lost. Don't expect them to lose, but I, I, somewhere around 24-20, 26-20, somewhere around there, but we're going to pass on that one. And my favorite team to bet on this week is the Green Bay Packers, and I'm feeling pretty confident, especially as we get into week five. It's usually where you know you start to figure things out. You know, Football starts to make sense around this time. I got the Packers winning big. I got, I got them scoring big points, 34 points, 34-20. to 20. And the Rams, the only, the only thing scary, a little scary here, is the Rams are pretty good at home. Like They're, they're much better at home. Stafford's still a dog. You know, he, he'll be able to sling the ball. They have Kyron Williams. You know, and, and we'll see if Jair Alexander played. They, they Packers, the Packers missed him badly last week, so we'll see if he plays. But I love the way the Packers match up in this game. Uh, Lafleur versus Lafleur and McVeigh should should be fun. But Packers, they were beside. They had sloppy mistakes against the Vikings defense. But that's what the Vikings defense does. They fly around the football t- field and they create turnovers. Besides that, though, they were explosive. Like they were gaining on that defense, and the Rams defense is nowhere near as good. And they're injured. Jordan Love has a day. These weapons have a day. They don't need Christian Watson to have a day. Jaden Reed is a stud. Dontavian Wicks, one to watch. Romeo Dubs. They have options. They have options out there. Uh, The Rams are struggling to stop the run. Josh Jacobs will get going. Everybody on that pack, every playmaker on that Packers offense should be productive in this game. They have a really good offensive line. Jordan Love's going to be kept clean in this game. They're going to be very productive on offense. The defense is where I'm a little... You know, unsure about, but they're not going to let the Rams go too crazy in this one. Hopefully, Alexander plays. So I love the pack. It actually started at three and a half, went down to three. So that's interesting. But maybe it's back to three and a half. Some spots now by the time I, this is up. But I either way, three and a half. I know it's got that hook on it. I love the Packers this week. They should handle business. Uh, I if I'm if I miss this one, I'm going to be very shocked. But uh, and the Packers. Uh, point total is 25 and a half. I love them against that. We've only had only one team total this year that I felt great about. It was the Bengals last week. Easy money right there. Packers point total. Crush it. 25 and a half over. Love that. And then if we're talking about teaser, we had the Dolphins plus seven. Hey, put the Packers plus three. If you think there's a chance that the Packers could lose this game, they will not lose by more than three. Throw that in there. If you want to throw a money line, I like the Packers. There's not too many straight up locks this week. I like the Packers. So let's see if uh, they, it's going to be surprising if they don't handle business. I know it's in LA and that I guess that's why it's a close line, but uh, it could be a shootout. Stafford could go to work. Got the Packers take care of business. They'll have a good game plan in this one. Giants at Seahawks, definitely some injuries to monitor in this one. This is one I want to go over because the Seahawks are beat up on defense. Therefore, the Giants should have some production on offense. And we know the Seahawks will be productive on offense. Problem is, I think I do think it'll go over, but I can't really put it as a for sure bet. Neighbors is still in concussion protocol. You take him away from the Giants, that's their offense. So, I mean, you got issues there. And the Giants defensive line is good. And the Seahawks are a little beat up on the offensive line, so... Could that slow down the Seahawks? It could slow down Geno Smith, but they're still so high-powered on offense. They can score in a single play. I think DK Metcalf has a big game in this one. Kenneth Walker looks really good when he's on the field. He looks really good when he's on the field. Lions couldn't stop him, and that's shocking because he's good, but the Lions run defense one of the best in football. So even with the issues that the Giants present, defensive line, the Seahawks injuries, they'll still score points. The Giants is going to depend on neighbors, but I love the matchup for Seattle because, uh, again, they'll be able to just find ways to put points put points up on the board, especially at home. And defensively, they slipped up against the Lions. That might be the best offense in football. Mike McDonald's a really good defensive coach. They'll be able to game plan for Daniel Jones and company. Uh, there's really one play. I know they have more than one good player, but there's really one playmaker that is really a threat. He's in concussion protocol. So I do like the Seahawks matchup at home. I'll have them winning 27-20. If Neighbors is out, we drop that giant score down a little bit. 16, 17, somewhere around there, but give me Seattle in this one. Cowboys and Steelers right there with the Broncos Raiders in terms of the toughest one to pick this week. In the picks video, you could tell that was my feeling. I was like, ah, which one do I go with? 
I kind of was leaning Cowboys last night in that picks video, but Cowboys got too many injuries. Brandon Cooks out of nowhere now has some something going on. He's out. And a big problem for this year, I mean, the Cowboys are still explosive on offense, and that's kind of the why you could go Cowboys is because they, even though they're underwhelming, they're still the Cowboys offense. Like they, statistically and on paper, they are still explosive. And the Steelers haven't really seen that yet. That defense, is it, is it quite as good as how it was when they were undefeated? I think it's close. I don't think it's quite as that good, as, as good as that. I think it's pretty, it's one of the better defenses still. Uh, you know, so I could see the Cowboys just being too much on offense where the Steelers, every Steelers game is pretty much the same where they just do not score enough points. They're kicking field goals at a touchdowns. If they do that, they're going to lose. They're going to lose to the Cowboys. But a big problem for the Cowboys on offense is CeeDee Lamb having to carry that receiver group. And now Brandon Cooks on top of on defense, Micah Parsons into Marcus Lawrence being out. If Micah Parsons plays all of a sudden. I don't think he will, but if he plays all of a sudden, I'm probably going leaning Cowboys. So it's a tricky one, one to monitor here. But I, I just too many injuries for the Cowboys. Another thing, Sumalo, who I thought last night probably wouldn't play this game. It sounds like he may play, uh, but they are without James Daniels and Troy Fatanu, so those are tough as well. But you don't have the elite pass rush to get after, you know, uh, Justin Fields. Justin Fields has been picking up a little bit. He'll be able to run this game. Najee bounce back game. Looks like you could run the Cowboys, even though they picked it up against the run last week. Uh, Cowboys offensive line is not the same as what it used to be either. So TJ Watt, I wish they had Highsmith in this game. So both teams missing pass rushes, but TJ Watt should get after him a uh, lot on Terrence Steele's plate. He's a pretty good offensive lineman, but I think for the Cowboys, I think Ferguson actually has a pretty good game. Uh, but that Cowboys defense just looks brutal right now. Well, too many injuries uh, in general. Curious to see if Kalen Carson plays uh, because even though he's a rookie, he's not the best on the planet. They need him out there opposite Diggs. Um, Overshone's playing really good. I like to point that out with the Cowboys like that. Uh, Steelers, prime time, Sunday Night Football, at home, great defense. TJ Watt, maybe the defensive player of the year right now, as of right now. They'll be able to run the ball. Tough game plan. Too many injuries for the Cowboys. I already said that. I'll take the Steelers 20-19. to 19. We'll take the Cowboys with the points. Uh, there's another teaser leg. You can actually bump up for some, you know, not the poorest odds. The Cowboys to plus 10. This should stay close. They can win the game. So pair that with the Packers teaser in the Dolphins teaser. You got yourself a teaser. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's a tricky one though. But uh, right now we'll monitor some injuries, but leaning Steelers. There's a couple games like that. Monday night football, and I will recap all my picks against the spread, but Monday night football, Saints at Chiefs. I like the under in this game. It's going to stay low, I would think. There's a there's a possibility, you know, why that could be scary, why your argument, you can argue against the under. Well, uh, the Chiefs, you know, they could go off. Home primetime football. Mahomes has been playing great. We know he's going to click in in the zone at some point, and the Saints run a ton of man coverage. And they've been making some money off blitzes as well. That's a no against Patrick Mahomes, and they have speed. Xavier Worthy out there, so they could they could take advantage of that. I'm just really not counting on a ton of offense, enough offense for the Chiefs. But Rasheed Rice is by far their best target, and Pacheco is by far one of their best playmakers and their best running back. Uh, you know, so those two guys being out, Pacheco's been out, but just like I just thought I'd bring that up still. Um, just limits them and worthy how consistent will he be i think he'll make big plays this matchup favors him man coverage he'll use his speed in this one um lack of running game you know they'll get try to get kareem hunt going just not enough offensively and the saints uh, off i worry about their offense against spagnola's defense uh, i think they'll get some big plays here and there but that's a really good well coached defense you got chris jones out there causing a ruckus so i i don't i think these are two defensive teams in this game that have a um, a highlight play on offense here and there, but mainly stall out defensive game. I'll go twenty to sixteen. Uh, Saints are undefeated against the spread on the road this year. I don't think it's going to keep up forever, but that kind of made me keep it a little close here under the five and a half. But it's a tricky one to bet on in terms of the spread because the Chiefs could win by a touchdown, you know. So it's a little tricky. But twenty to sixteen, I like the under in that one. Maybe that's bold because you got fast, high-powered offenses and it's not the biggest total, but um, that's what I'm going to go with for this Monday night game. And here's a recap of all my spread picks here. Uh, I took the Falcons. We took the Vikings. So a lot of favorites at the start. Ravens, Texans, if Mixon plays, Bears, Commanders, 
it could be a trap game. Definitely stay away from that one. I was thinking about making that one a push prediction. Uh, Jacksonville minus three, Miami plus one. Like them in the teaser, along with the Cowboys teaser, the Packers teaser. You can rewind the video, check those out. Uh, Raiders, I didn't have winning, but plus three seems decent. You know, but Arizona plus seven and a half. Green Bay is my favorite of the week, minus three. Seattle minus six. Minor some injuries in a lot of these games, including that one. The Cowboys won, but the Cowboys should keep it close. They could could win the game, even if you don't have them winning. Uh, plus two and a half is decent. Wish it was three. Saints plus five and a half. They're undefeated against the spread on the road this year, so that made that one interesting. Chiefs a little beat up, but I do have them winning that game. So make sure you check out our other videos. We got power rankings and picks with the boys up on the channel. We have more coming. My locks video and a lot more content. Been talking about the Devonte. We could talk about the Devonte Adams trade in the video in the near future, but we've been talking a lot about it on Twitter with news updates, my thoughts, predictions, things like landing spots, things like that. So uh, very important to follow that Twitter link pin in the comments for that at Godhaus NFL but that will do it for this one thanks everyone for watching goodbye